Well, I want to find some arms. And the cop uh, who saw a UFO in 1966, apparently somewhere in the Syracuse area, Syracuse, New York, says that it ruined his life. How do we decide what to believe? All the articles about UFOs over the last month got me thinking about a dramatic flying saucer sighting that happened near where I grew up. If I could change all I haven't done in my life, I would have changed one thing. That would be the night we changed that damn thing, that saucer. That's what Dale Spohr told a reporter in the autumn of 1966. Six months after he saw a large metal aircraft hovering over his police cruiser on the side of a highway. It was 5 a.m. and dark out, but there's no mistaking it. The thing was 40 feet across, shaped like a saucer, and only about 150 feet above them, creeping over the hill treetops and bathing the street below in bright white light. His partner, Wilbur Neff, saw it too. So did dozens of other people including law enforcement officers in four counties. Police radios across the northeast Ohio and western Pennsylvania were abuzz that night with talk of a flying saucer. Feeling a bit spooked, Spar called the radio operator at Portage County Sheriff's Office. It's perfectly still, and it just makes a humming noise. I don't know if this is Syracuse area, uh, but down here they have an article in the Syracuse Herald Jur Journal, and that is a Syracuse area newspaper. The dispatcher ordered him to keep an eye on it, so he did spar through his car and gear and took off after it east down Route 224. They hit speeds of 103 miles per hour as they followed slowly rising saucer toward dawn. Near the Pennsylvania line, local police officer saw the saucer and two deputies screaming after it, so he joined the chase. Spur ran his tires bald and his gas tank dry in Conway, Pennsylvania, just as the sun was peering above over the horizon. Three officers pulled into the gas station and watched with another cop as the aircraft descended straight up into the sky. Now, remember, uh, this is before there's much of any VTOLs or anything like that. And helicopters, obviously, but, uh, this wasn't any helicopter. The papers went crazy, and AP picked up the story and went national. Even though many people saw the UFO, Spar became the main witness. It was Spar's saucer. He chased this thing for 86 hours. 86 miles, not hours. Uh, I'd rather not talk about Gerald Boucher, the chief of police from the village of Mantua, told the Cleveland Plains dealer reporter, it's something you should be for, that should be forgotten, left alone. I saw something, but I don't know what it was. Here you can see the article. I wish I had a way to zoom. But this is a known incident. Okay, that's an Ohio. So this happened over Ohio. That was the uh, Syracuse newspaper, though. March 1966, a month before Spars signing a trucker in Rural Michigan said he saw two, saw a glowing saucer touch down. Others said they saw it too. The claim garnered massive publicity, and Fontenelle was forced to call a forced press conference in Detroit to announce his findings. That's uh, Hector Quantanella of uh, Project Blue Book. I'm probably butchering that name, it's pretty long. He attributed the incident to... S Take a guess. Swamp gas. 
The American public had never heard of swamp gas and were not persuaded. Neither was Congress, which called on a committee hearing on UFOs. Uh, Quintanella was living, that's probably a better pronunciation. He thought the UFO bots were manipulating politicians and the press to stoke fears of government conspiracy hide evidence of aliens. Mm, yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Members of Congress eager to prove there was no conspiracy and satisfy public demand for the truth grilled Quintanella hard during his testimony. He almost lost his cool one congressman. I considered his questions irrelevant and political. Quintanella recalled in his memoir, Hell, I didn't go around the country tracking down every alleged UFO photo. And this goes on and on. Now, I don't know about ruining your life. Okay, maybe this guy had some serious problems. This article's really long, but, uh... But yeah, it says... It says I thought maybe he was having a nervous breakdown. I, I don't know about ruining your life, but it will change your life. You see one of these things up in the sky, and you know it can't be explained... Uh, by conventional means, it'll change your life. Make no mistake. You know, I've seen these things a number of times. 2003, 2005. And then, again, 2013. I saw that big sucker over uh, Monroe County, New York. Big, big thing. Far too big to be a conventional aircraft. Kind of square-like. I've done that uh, video before. So I've done a number of videos on these. Uh, it will change your life. <laughs> Once you've seen one of these things, you're going to realize that things aren't what you've been taught. Who was it? I forget who it is. Somebody... Some commentator says that not, uh, things aren't as you've been taught. I was trying to remember what that quote is. I had a brain... Or I had a really tough time getting home last night between tailgaters and reckless drivers and a major snowstorm. And at one point, I did lose my cool. It'll change your life, make no mistake about it. So I, don't, I can understand this uh, cop having problems. But you gotta go on with your life, you can't worry about it. Unless you physically get scooped up and taken to another planet. Then you got more serious problem. Well, I don't think that happens very often. I didn't say it never happens. I'm our facts to Mars. Keep watching the sky. There's things up there that don't belong. Thanks for watching.